Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be an introduction to a brand new team. We're going to be taking part in the APA D-League, also known as the APA Academy. And uh, this is going to be a really interesting concept. So we're going to be drafting multiple times. And each draft, I believe, we're going to be using for four weeks. So whatever I have here is going to be active for the next four weeks. And then we draft again. And should we make playoffs, we'll be able to uh, comprise a whole new team based on all of our four drafts as long as they meet the requirements set out. But uh, for this first draft, we do have the third overall pick in this draft. Uh, it's a really interesting position. It's been a very long time since I've picked anywhere near this position. And I really didn't know what I wanted to take. Obviously, Coco was going to go first round. That was pretty much a given. And by the time it fell down to me, I didn't know really what I wanted. I kind of felt like Celesteela would have been the best mod to pick up on the board but um i've used celestila the only other time that i've had this high position before back in pgbl season two and i had a lot of fun with it but uh, i wanted to try something new and because it is so rare that i am up in this draft position i ended up going with landorus therian now uh obviously a whole lot of ou teams use landorus therian and i'm not terribly familiar or comfortable with ou so i don't use it terribly often a lot of people have kind of soured on it they say it's underwhelming and it doesn't really often get to the top of the ko leaderboards but i heard somebody say and i wish i could remember who say that um even if it doesn't get that many ko's on its own it sets up a whole lot of other mods and it fills a whole lot of roles that allow a whole bunch of other mods to do well and honestly that was really convincing to me obviously it can intimidate uh it has a monstrous 145 attack stat it is a little slow but you can kind of play with its um defense a little bit it can set up rocks uh it can be av it can do a whole bunch of things that i think are going to be super valuable but i think this is going to be a good mon to kind of support a whole bunch of other things that i want to do so again i did have the third overall pick which means that i did have to wait quite a while for it to come all the way back to me this is a moment where i didn't really know what i wanted to do do i didn't want to really squander an opportunity to get one of those typings that are really sought after so with my second pick i did end up picking up the scissor now scissor on its own is really really strong i think i can have a lot of fun with it i've used it a couple times in the past before i kind of got a feel for how to use it obviously the the technician boosted stab priority is huge with with the bullet punch with swords the anti u-turn all those standard sets with roost and a fog uh it can be built so many different ways i feel reasonably comfortable using it and i've been happy with it so far i don't think it's going to be on the top of any ko leaderboards but i don't think i really need it to be i think in terms of just supporting each other landorus and scissor really do that well uh this was an expensive pick so this is another tier one mon so I blew 180 points right off the bat, but again, when it comes to these really important typings like the steel typing that I really needed uh, pretty early on, I felt like, especially when I had to wait so long for these picks to come back to me, I felt like this was something that I had to snap off early. I snapped it off for the second pick in the overall draft, and hopefully later on we can get some more speed, some more offense, and uh, honestly, I tried to do that as soon as I could with this third pick we went and got Greninja. Now, back in the UBL Season 1, I think this mon was tied with a heckin' Mega Heracross and something else for the KO leader, which is kind of wild because I know the other mon was a Tier 1 mon. I can't remember exactly what it was, but these other coaches had to spend a Tier 1 pick or a Mega pick for that number 1 KO leader, and I was out here spending a Tier 2 pick for a fantastic mon that did a whole lot for me. I felt really comfortable using it. I really like the kinds of things it does. Obviously, it has good speed that has to be respected. I think it can just set the tone for what I want to do. It can pivot out really well, and I'm really excited to pick it up again. But with that, once again, I do have to wait a whole basically two rounds for it to come back to me. And I really felt like I needed to build out uh, some more defensive presence, some more support around uh, the Mons that I would really like to put a spotlight on. So with my next pick, I did pick up Delmize. Now, Delmize, Grass Ghost, super defensive, a decent attack stat, and can rapid spin. It does what it does really well. There's another Mon that I've drafted in the past. It was really between this and Decidueye. I really wanted one of them. And I ended up going with this, again, for the rapid spin, obviously. And I think for the defensive presence that I do get out of it, I think uh, it will be a really good pick for me. I do have to be concerned about, obviously, special hits. Decidueye would have taken those hits better 
but uh, for what it does, I really still like Delmize. I, uh, it has basically triple stab with the Steelworker, but also just knockoff, power whip, rapid spin, those types of things. Even just toxic synthesis, this thing can probably take hits uh, with certain matchups. And if I can get it in those matchups, it can synthesis up and take hits. But really, again, this is primarily for a big defensive presence that I felt like I really needed in the situation. And uh, like I said, and again, I am on a little bit of a semi-wheel pick. So with my next pick, I really felt like I needed some more team speed. I picked up Jolteon with a massive 130 speed. So I broke 120 with Greninja. Now I'm breaking 130 with my Jolteon. Really getting in into that higher end speed. And uh, Jolteon's a mod that I've drafted before a couple times, I believe. But it's really just so good. It does a couple things, but it does them really well. It is really fast, and even against things that do outspeed it, the quick feed set is so good and has saved me so many times against it just matchups like a Mega Low Punny uh, in the UBL playoff season one. It can still hit decently hard, and I know it seems really one dimensional, but it is really fun to play with, especially um, if it is in situations where you can get the ground type out early and just vault switch around, or if there's a matchup where they can't really bring their ground type because it's too weak to certain things, and potentially that might be helped out with my Greninja ice beaming things, or, or threatening ice beam on certain things, and this thing is free to vault switch out. Those are the matchups where a mod like this can really shine. I've still yet to bring Synchro Noise, but I'm really looking forward to hopefully doing that at some point. Not much about this mod other than it is really fun to use, and uh, it does certain things really well, in my opinion. But on to the next mod again. We are waiting quite a while for it to get back to us. And uh, we ended up picking up the Delphox. We really needed a fire type. And historically, I've, I'm really bad at drafting fire types. There aren't a whole bunch of fire types that I really go out and seek draft in and draft out. I feel reasonably comfortable with Delphox. It, it is also a psychic type. So it can do certain things without being weak to you bug without being weak to u-turn um hopefully it's a little bit less spammable but also uh punish bug types that would want to normally hit my psychic types with a fire blast uh it can cobra will-o-wisp which is one of my favorite um ways to use a mon like this uh those types of things i'm excited about also gets flame charge so has a decent speed tier on its own but uh can get that up a little bit higher if i can figure out a way to get a flame charge up um, I've used it in the past with with Salic Berry sets. Those have been really fun. Um, does also get Dazzling Gleam for really niche situations, but those are some of the most valuable situations for when I really need that uh, Dazzling Gleam. But with that, like I said, I primarily just needed a Fire type. It was a bonus that it's also a Psychic type. I'm going to see what I can do with it. Um, I kind of generally screw myself by not getting my Fire types early, but even when I do try to get Fire types early, I'm generally underwhelmed by them because I don't really know what to get. Every once in a while, Infernate falls to me, but regardless, moving on. Uh, I believe this is on another semi-wheel, so I ended up picking up Drudagon. Now, again, there's another situation where I've waited super late to get um, a Dragon type, but as far as Dragon types go, this is one that I've wanted to use for a really long time, but, it, but I generally get my Dragon types earlier than this. This is a really fun mod I think I'll be able to use with the Rough Skin. Rough Skin plus Rocky Helmet is a super fun set. Really, again, punishing U-turns, hopefully protecting Greninja a, a little bit, but um, but yeah, just in general, punishing U-turns. Um, a sub glare set uh, would be really fun to use, does get Stealth Rocks. But also get Sheer Force for uh, Elemental Punch situations when that can be super clutch and Mold Breaker as well uh, in the couple situations that that'll come in handy. That I think is just going to be a pretty reliable bring a whole bunch of weeks. Be a defensive check to certain things. Set up rocks. Get get some glares off. I don't think it's particularly overrated. I don't think, I don't think it's particularly underrated. I think it's I, th I think it's pretty sufficiently rated. But but it does certain things that uh, I needed my team to do ultimately, and it fills a few roles that I felt like I needed on this draft. I'm pretty happy with it, even though I probably did wait a little bit too long for a dragon type. And I believe now again, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm waiting for forever to, to get back to me, and I believe I'm stuck in this moment without a fairy type. I'm realizing now I don't have a fairy type on my team, 
and I end up picking up a Grand Bull. Now, Grand Bull, I needed a, a little bit of a, a defensive presence. I really wanted an Intimidate Mon. That was super valuable to me in this moment, I think. It can be a super defensive Mon. It can Thunder Wave things. It can be a defensive check to certain dragons, and which is going to be pretty darn important, I think, with my overall uh, build. But I do get that double Intimidate with the Landers going. And again, just trying to prevent dragons from running wild anywhere. But funnily enough, what, whatever you think about Dragon, this Mon is probably a little bit more one dimensional. It was pretty difficult for me thinking of what I wanted to do in this situation because I, I felt like I needed some type of fairy and some type of intimidate defense presence, but um, I was concerned because I'd blown so many points on Scizor that I was digging down in tier four. This this draft has four, has three, this draft has three tier fours, uh, all of which I'm pretty happy with, but uh, it's really not looking like the most well rounded draft. And believe me, I see plenty of possibilities in this draft composition but uh it is going to be an interesting team building experience regardless uh i believe this would put us on a semi wheel another mon that i felt like i really wanted in this situation was the tauros now tauros another fantastic mon in tier five it was the best value i could get out of tier five now this was a super interesting pick for me because i did have one or two options in tier five um, I really almost picked up Mill Tank, which would have been a whole lot of fun to use. Um, I believe somebody might have sniped Mill Tank. I'm not too too sure. M or maybe it was the case that I picked this tier five and then somebody picked Mill Tank pretty shortly after me. But I was really torn because I was either going to go Tauros and some other mon, or I thought about going Mill Tank for the tier five with um, something like a Lycanroc Dusk. I was going to pick up Lycanroc Dusk uh, in that free tick. In that free pick spot because uh another thing that i was noticing was that after i blew so many points on scissor i was getting so concerned with points and i was conserving points so much that my final free pick i had so many i budgeted out enough points where i could afford a tier two or below so i probably budgeted a little bit too aggressively but again i was so worried about blowing out my points after scissor and i went so aggressively budget with my um typings and whatnot that I really didn't know what I wanted to spend a tier 2 pick on, so I really aggressively thought about picking up that Lycanroc Dusk for that other free pick and uh, trying to make it work with my tier 5, but I felt really underwhelmed with my tier 5 options, and I felt like this was the most value that I could get out of tier 5, and uh, I believe right after I picked Toro, somebody picked, like, picked up Lycanroc Dusk soon after me anyway, so... It probably would have been difficult to get everything that I wanted, regardless of what I did, but I'm happy with the Tauros pick. Uh, Tauros and Lycanroc Dusk, I don't think, they would have made each other redundant, I think, um, with the roles that they're filling, but Tauros on its own is so good. Just Sheer Force, Life Orb, Body Slam is so spammable in most situations. Also has Intimidate, can is also a fantastic Scarfer, and just overall, a really fantastic mon and some of the best value you can get at tier 5 bar none um but with that i believe now i'm waiting for it to get back to me and uh, i end up picking up mega beedrill now mega beedrill has a big part has a big spot in my heart um it is the first mega that i've ever drafted in pgbl season one and uh, i've drafted it maybe twice more after that but i really like it it has fantastic dual typing um given my team comp um this fits super well because i need a poison type first and foremost but this is really a huge anti-fairy measure and i think a really necessary one but also u-turn just i think fits this team super well uh being able to u-turn into defensive checks like Landris or Gramble I think is a pretty solid play for most matchups but uh, Mega Beedrill just can be a monster on its own I'm really excited to use Mega Beedrill again that 145 speed stat is monstrous and uh, it's something that I think this team can take advantage of a whole heck of a lot better and again just breaking speed tiers on the high end breaking uh 120 130 and now 145 uh, is just kind of wild and that 110 with Tauros really hitting that high end super duper aggressively and hitting the low end pretty ag aggressively with that Dragon Granbull uh, there's probably a, a bit of a gap in between there but 
for the most part, I really like the way that this is coming through on the high end. Oh, and also with the lander is at 90, so everything from 90 to 145 is pretty much uh, covered pretty darn well with the Delphox at 104 as well. Um, very decent coverage, uh, although it does kind of fall off after that. But with that, we are on the final pick of my draft. And again, I can afford a tier two or lower. And I really didn't know what I wanted out of, out of tier two either. There were a couple of options that I thought about a lot, but I ended up going with the Cresselia. And you can see here, Cresselia is just a defensive monster. I really uh, think this could fill a huge, huge um, role in my team. This was an interesting position for me to be in because I didn't have any super specific roles that I really wanted to fill. But as a general last pick, super bulk, just kind of all-purpose defensive check to most things. I felt like Cresselia could be super valuable in this situation, and I think it can be a fantastic bring for a lot of situations. It's not a mon that I've used a whole heck of a lot or a mon that I'm super crazy comfortable with, but uh, I think for the type of value that it gets me as a final round pick, and like I said, as a general all-purpose defensive check, I think it has a whole lot of value. And this is one of those mons where even if I don't feel comfortable bringing it all the time. It can at least be something that uh, my opponents have to respect in their prep. And at the very least, you have to think about what to do against this mod. So I think overall as a final pick, and this is some of the most value that I could have gotten. Looking at my team as a whole, like I said, I really do like it. So regardless, I think that this is a really interesting draft. A whole lot of mods that I've used in the past. A whole lot of mods that I've had fun with. And that's the main thing that I was shooting for. I wanted to build a team that I could have fun with. That I feel reasonably comfortable with. And I think I built out a pretty fantastic skeleton of a team that can do things in playoffs when I pick certain mons from this draft as well as some future drafts and overall I think that's going to be it for the first draft in the APA Academy. Uh, this team is going to be used this weekend so on Saturday there's going to be a PCL battle the second to last week I believe and then and then week one with this team so that's going to be a whole lot of fun and then and I believe by the time this goes out uh, everyone wants to have started draft two already which is bananas how early this is but uh apparently that's the situation for right now until then that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back again really really soon like i said with apa with pcl uh that should be ending soon and uh a couple other things right around the corner like the mpl and in the summer the ubl and the pgl if everything works out but once again with that thank you guys so much for watching everyone once again out <laughs>